For endurance to build, there must be three things. Number one, proper education. Number two, prudent engagements. And number three, personal empowerment. For endurance to build, there must be proper education, prudent engagements, personal empowerment. In order for us to endure this Christian life, these three things must be evident. If it's not evident, you won't be able to endure. It takes divine engagements for us to have divine endur endurance. You can't endure a Christian life without the Christ. You can't endure without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. So if, you're, if you really want to question, you know, whether or not you should pursue something, you have to look at your heart and say, am I engaging? But let's go into proper education. The reason why many people fall away is due to them being presented with fragmented sentences and not full solid sentences. In other words, they were only presented with a partial gospel, not the full gospel with patience. The reason why many people fall away and they only endure for a while is due to them being presented with fragmented sentences, sentences that are not complete and not full solid ones. In other words, they were only presented with a partial gospel, not the full gospel with patience. Meaning, a lot of people are pursuing God, but don't even know why they're pursuing him. They didn't really get the full gospel. Many people have been brought to the altar because of love, have been brought to the altar because of grace, but was not taught or told about the work, the warfare, and the wrath. They were not taught that, yo, you got to make sure you walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. That you got to make sure you examine to see if you even know the faith. You got to make sure you look for fruit to see that you was converted. You got to be able to set checkpoints in your life to see, have I grown? Have I, is there any evidence? Because once you have evidence, man, you can endure. But you can't endure because, oh, you know, hey, I went to seminary, I went to college. I remember, no, 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 we're not talking about enduring because of intel. We're talking about enduring because the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. But most people are not properly educated about what they are following. It's like going to a job, no training, and they put you on the floor day one. You're gonna be confused. How many people are confused when we be like, oh, thank you for coming to church. Here's some donuts, here's some juice. We'll see you in church on Sunday. <laughs> but no one's sitting there telling me, no, 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 you know. Um, when you go back to your car, those demons are gonna attack you. Be prepared for your sleep to be restless. Be prepared for you to question God's love for you. Be ready for all these bombarding thoughts. Be ready. So many people be like, I ain't going down there because I don't want that. I'd rather have one or two come down and, and more. I'd rather have one or two real ones come down than 5,000 fake ones. Because two converted people are more powerful than five unconverted. You can have church. Listen, listen, we got how many churches in this city? This is the second Bible Belt. Oklahoma's the first Bible Belt. Charles the second Bible Belt. And the city is still segregated. The city still got problems. And we got mega churches everywhere. Listen, if you really brought 5,000, 10,000 truly converted people with a mission, this city would be different. Check the state of your city and the state of your city will, will, will show you the state of your churches. If the city ain't changed, that means your churches ain't following Jesus. When you look at your community, look at your city, look at your house. If your house hasn't changed, then truly maybe you haven't been changed. Proper education leads to patience and endurance. What I mean by giving the full gospel of patience, some of us, we don't got the time. We have evangelistic mentalities. We don't have a discipleship mindset. We, we, we bring you to God, come to my church, come to my church, come to my church. Yeah, 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 hoo, 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 join me. But we don't have the time to say, you know what? Let me walk you through this thing. Let me build my faith so I can be able to tell you. Let me bring you to somebody that can help you understand why you shouldn't be living that way. But it's hard for people to ask others to repent when they haven't repented. Prudent engagements. God allows things to happen in our lives to build our endurance. He wants us to learn how to endure the good times and the bad times, the tribulations and persecutions, as well as the treasures and prosperities. God allows things to happen in our lives to build our endurance. He wants us to learn how to endure the good times and the bad times, the tribulations and persecutions, as well as the treasures and prosperities. Listen, 
you got to be able to know how to endure the good as well. Most people leave God when life gets good. Every God got a pack house when all hell breaks loose. <laughs> but when everybody's full of blessings, people stop praying, people stop fasting, people stop seeking. God says, no, I need you to engage with me in the good and bad times. God wants all weather friends. He wants us to be able to say, God, I'm with you when my life is bad and I'm with you when my life is good. The tribulations and persecutions you got to be able to endure as well as the treasures and prosperities you got to be able to endure. And the endurance for the treasures and prosperities is tougher than enduring the tribulation and persecution. The Bible says it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to get to heaven. Why is that? Because Money and treasures have a way of weighing us down. Poor people. <laughs> you don't got to worry about packing this China. <laughs> you don't got to worry about packing this. That's why God be like, man, why are y'all searching for these little mansions and you don't even know what I built for you up here? We rest fully when we get there. But we got to be able to endure our hearts desire to leave when going through good times when money is there man you gotta look at your you gotta slow your when money comes like you gotta slow your life down immediately when blessings come you gotta slow no 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 okay 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 god what are we gonna do with these blessings because god does not bless you he blesses through you oh god bless me no no ask god to bless through me so that I'm so I'm, he gives seed to the sower. Like he, like we're supposed to be distribution channels, not hoarders. We're supposed to be like, oh, I'll hold this until you're ready for me to release it. That's why God be like, your Mercedes, your Durango, whatever car, your Audi, your, your Honda, that ain't yours. It's mine. And if I tell you to give it up, give it up. Whatever still is holding your heart, you will never give to God. Your life should be so free of you that when God says, and you know God, God be tripping, bro. You be, you be down to your last 20 <laughs> and you don't get paid to next week and God be like, and you know, how, you know, you know, you know you, we, we turn up our music when we see those homeless people. <laughs> we be like, you don't even want to look him in the eye. Because <laughs> you know God, gonna be, if you look him in the eye, God going to be like, give him that 20. And sometimes God will have you give stuff to people who don't need it just to help you practice of letting go. That's why God said, man, I can't put nothing in the closed fists. That's why I love giving, man. Sometimes, man, and you know, God, those little cute checks we write, God don't really care about. When God asks you to give, he gives when it hurts. <laughs> oh, God will make you give and that thing hurt. <laughs> You'd be like, God, man, I had plans for that 20. I had plans for Benjamin. I had plans for all of them. I even had plans for who that, the, uh, the, 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 whoever on the dollar bills. I had plans. And God'd be like, no, 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 no. I'm having you give. So you understand the verse that says it's blessed to give than to receive. Because when God is your Lord, he'll provide. Let's keep going. Start talking about money. All right. God cares about how we engage the good and bad times. God cares. That's how God measures our readiness. That's how he measures whether we're ready to go forward. He measures by putting you through seasons of making it hurt. And sometimes God blesses you. You thinking, God is my breakthrough. No, God, so I'm just blessing you with, with three stacks to see what you do with 3,000. God, sometimes God, you be like, praise God, God gave me 3,000. God be like, I just gave it. The, the, the blessing is actually a test. The blessing is a test. Now, I'm blessing you with 5,000 this time because I really want to give you 50, but I'm trying to teach you how to manage the five. Let's keep going. Personal empowerment. God desires for us to have joy before, joy during, Enjoy after good and bad times. And the only way for this to be possible is to constantly find joy in his word and his presence. I call this the joy mindset. 
The joy mindset is when we train our minds to find joy in everything. Where we don't look for the, 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 the junk or the jam, where I'm jammed in a, in a, in a, in a bad place, but I look for the joy. That, 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 that in every situation, if I can find the joy in it, then instead of giving my words to my circumstances, I'm giving praise to the Christ. Most of us have given more words to our circumstances and how we feel about it, more so than finding the joy in it and saying, God, I'm thankful. Personal empowerment says, when I'm aware, I'm empowered. And the only way for this to be possible is to constantly find joy in his word and his prayer. If you want to get through tough times, you got to find joy in his word and in his presence. I ain't talking about reading your Bible for ritualistic dude. We're talking about every time I, I'm going to give you a tip. Every time I read my Bible, I always ask the Holy Spirit, read with me. I'm, I, I be acting like I'm in kindergarten again, first grade. Read to me. Show me this thing. And when you do that, the words come off the page. You'll try to get past that verse and you just can't get past that word. And then all of a sudden, if you're if you're a preacher and you have really conditioned this and you you really in your, all of a sudden that one verse, 50 points. <laughs> then all of a sudden you'd be looking down to hold that verse. You'd be like, man, that's a deep verse. <laughs> and you'd be like, man, I, you know, we be we be we be going over script so fast. We don't take time to say, OK, God, let me sit here. Because when you begin to feel that revelation and God begins to show you stuff and God begins to show you how that word relates to your situation. Man, you will be like, man, I can't wait to open my Bible because that Bible is alive. But ain't it alive if the Spirit is not reading it to you. Satan's objective. The word works, but to ensure that the word doesn't work for the believer, just simply make sure the believer doesn't work the word. The word works, whether you work it or don't work it. It works. But to ensure that the word doesn't work for the believer, just simply make sure the believer doesn't work the word. He wants you out of that book completely. Listen, I can prove it to you like this. Don't even say how, don't even say it. But how many minutes and hours did you read your word in the last seven days? Just think about it. Compared to everything else. Oh man, sometimes my Bible be right there and I'd be like, why haven't I touched it yet? It's like, it's almost like a, like a, a force field. <laughs> and I'm like, am I? And he'd be looking at that Bible for five minutes and be like, why am I not touching it still? <laughs> they know that that word is alive. That word changes. But when you don't read it and you don't engage with his presence, that's why, man, I must find his presence. Everywhere I go, I got to find his presence at my job. I got to find his presence in the car. I got to be able to say, God, you got to have meeting places everywhere you, you, you visit occasionally. And say, okay, if I have a bad time and I know I'm by that Starbucks, God, I'm going to drive over there. I'm going to get into that bathroom, shut the door because I know I'm going to meet you there. Or if I got to pull the truck or let me get off this highway off, off Johnston Road, I'm going to pull off over there by the Chick-fil-A. I'm going to park because I got to seek. I got to feel your presence. Because when you do whatever it takes to find his presence, that thing would become such a desirable place. From empowerment to enduring to the end, real quick, these points are very important for the exercise. It's a lot, but blame it on God because he gave it to me, all right? From empowerment to enduring. So our goal is, is to learn how to endure, but we're not going to be able to endure if we're not empowered. God gives us a vast peace, a vivid picture, a valid plan, a validated patience, <laughs> a vigorous preparation. Listen, listen, this is how God, this is how God shows me, me. Visible product, a victorious placement. In order to endure anything, God has to give you something to work on. If it wasn't for my books, if it wasn't for my videos, I would have been left God. God oftentimes drops some things in your life where you like, I must keep going. He always gives you a vast peace. Why? 
Because when you feel that peace of God, it's intoxicating. It's such a vastness because with that peace, you understand, okay, I have a place to create. The reason why we do not create is because we're not attached to the creator. That's why I'd be like, man, do not get so consumed in careers that you've lost sight of what you was created for. Listen, there's nothing wrong with a career and a call. It's okay to work this thing, take some money, put it in your call, but some of us don't even pursue this and God gave you that job for the sake of funding your call. So he says, I give you my peace so that when that creativity hits you, you go to work. But if you in sin, you won't find that peace. So he says, you know what, my, my peace is so vast that when you come to yourself at that person's house or you come to yourself at the bar and you come to yourself at the club, my peace will meet you there. And when you meet that peace, that peace, that's why I say God always meets you in the presence of him and your current love. We, God, God rarely, not rarely, God meets more people after the act of sin than he does at altars. Because when a person is at, y'all know we've been there. A lot of people been in situations where they drunk that alcohol and they was like, you know what? I don't want to do this no more. That man done fell asleep snoring and you already, God showed you the plan to get out. You know you're supposed to let that girl go and, and you, you, right after the sin, right after God be like, so is this fulfilling you or what? So you want to follow me out or you want to stay here? Oh, we think we meet us at the altars. He does, don't get me wrong. But use those people run to the altar because they already met them before. And when that peace is so vast, God said, man, I, uh, you know, and my, my bad if I go down this rabbit hole. I'm, I'm going to be out your way at 835, I promise. 835, I'm done. But let me say this. We judge these people who strip, sell drugs, immoral sins. We judge them. As if we weren't like them three years ago. Let me just put that out there. <laughs> and while they're stripping, we thinking God ain't with them. God sometimes bring his people through strip clubs because he knows that if I save that stripper and that other girls who stripped with her, I can't wait till the day comes when a girl comes back off the pole and brings the whole club with her. I can't wait when God reaches somebody who's been selling drugs and he puts the drugs up here and the gun up here and the whole gang comes in the room. But, but we be thinking that God's going to use us. To, no, no, no. God sometimes used the person who had to go through that decision. Who had them? Yes, you made the wrong turn. God ain't tell the person to go that way. But he says, go ahead. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to give you grace too. Those men can't touch you. Those men can't hurt you. You, those bullets missed you three or four times. You, you lost the drugs and that dude didn't come find you. Your house didn't get shot up because I gave you grace. Because I know when my, when my peace catches up with you <laughs> and my presence grabs a hold of you, you'll be like, you know what? Bro, let's all stop doing this. That's why don't judge the people who are exiting the sins you already exit. If you watch their life carefully, they're heading to the exit door. Stop judging them because they ain't got there. We know God is leading them to the exit door. But God sometimes to bring you through situations so that people will follow you out too. Number two, a vivid picture. After you have a, valid, a vast peace, he gives you a vivid picture. It's evident in my life. God will show you glimpses but never show you the journey. Why does he do that? Because if he showed you the journey that connects the glimpses, we would have been quit. God shows us glimpses, be like, this is what your life's going to be in 20 years, go. Oh, wow. Sign me up. <laughs> and God be like, oh, by the way, the fine print. <laughs> Pruning. Pain. Heartbreak. 
I'm going to get you there. But it ain't, on, it ain't in the HOV lane. <laughs> There's going to be some traffic. But he gives you a vivid picture anyway because that vivid picture makes you seek for a valid plan. God, I got a picture, and that's why you got to do this. When God gives you a picture, ask him for a plan. Many of us get the picture, and we start planning ourselves. But when God gives you the picture, you got to say, God, what's the plan for this? Because if you know how deeply you was, and how, va how quick you were saved, you'll realize, I ain't ready for that. I'm going to mess that up, God. <laughs> so you will be so dependent on God that you'll be like, God, I need your plan, because if I do this in my own strength, I will mess it up. Vivid picture of valid plan, a validated patience. When a person is poised with God, it'd be like, okay, there's a set patience for this. It's already validated. It's already set. God's saying, you know what? That's why I ask God how long. Because sometimes God would be like, sweetheart, young man, 10 years. Give me 10 years. I promise I'll get you there. Ooh, God tell you 10 years. You'd be like, no, God, I don't want this plan. That's why we settle for our own plans. The Bible says many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the purpose of the Lord that prevails. I'm tired of making my plans. Because sometimes our plans derail us. So we need a validated patience. We need to set patience. A patience that says, hey, hey God, however long. And in that patience is a vigorous preparation. When you feel like you don't have time, you rush. But when you know you have time, you prepare. People swear Jesus is coming tomorrow. If he does, that'd be crazy. I called it. But if Jesus come, many people live like, I got to do this now. Man, we're going to be 70 years old like, daggum, Jesus did People 50, 100, 500 years ago was like, y'all get your house in order. Jesus coming tomorrow. Dead and gone. You have more time than you think. You have more time than you think. Prepare accordingly. From that preparation, you have a visible product. There's nothing in my life that has impacted me to pursue God more than a finished product. The reason why many of us fail, because we don't have a visible product. That book is still swimming in your heart. That album is still swimming in your heart. And the reason why you're not enduring is because it, when, I, when, I, when I see that first book unplugged, when I see that, I get teary. I don't even want to look at it. Because it took so much to get that book out. Now, when people talk about that book, bless them. I'm like, man, if you only knew how hard it was to get it out because of my fears. And God's like, bruh, you done got three more out of you. It's crazy how the devil attacks your first step heavily. Because if you break the first step, the rest of the steps are easy. If you go to the gym just five times in a row, <laughs> you will break the cycle in your mind. I told my baby sister, I told her, she, wants to, she went to New York, she moved to New York, and she wanted to pursue her modeling career, she wanted to pursue her career. I told her, I said, look, go for it. I said, you know why? If you don't go for it, you'll have resentment. I'd rather for you to go and see for yourself than to be cursing me out in your head because I told you no. Because if she goes and she's blessed, it's gonna get her up the road. Some of us, the reason why we haven't progressed from where we are, we haven't allowed creativity to lure us out of complacency. Visible product lures to a victorious placement. Like, man, when you're placed by God from all this hard work, you just don't have the power to get there. Now you feel empowered to sustain yourself there. Where do you see yourself placed? Because wherever you see yourself placed, you will make sure you find his presence. Because when you find his presence, you're going to seek for a vivid picture, a valid plan, and the rest of my points. <laughs> Final thoughts and I'm out your way. Promotion will never precede preparation. Promotion will never precede preparation. Number two, challenges will always reveal how long you will endure. That's why God tests everyone that God, we know those three dudes that was asking to follow Jesus. He said, follow me. And that following tested their hearts. Well, let me go bury my dad first. God will always challenge everyone whose challenges or desires to come after him. Because the challenge will prove how long you'll endure.